Hello and welcome. Today we'll be talking about the 2023 Zoe Python SDK mentorship. My name is Timothy Johnson and I'm a software engineer at Broadcom working on Zoe CLI and the Zoe SDKs. A fun fact about me is that I like to play foosball and now I'll turn it over to my fellow mentor, Fernando. Hello everyone, my name is Fernando and as Timothy, I work at Broadcom uh, in the SOE CLI and SDKs. Um, a fun fact about me is that I'm part of the 5am club, uh, if you know that book, and I'm going to turn it over to Aditya, one of the mentees. Hi, I am Aditya Sina and I'm a computer science engineering student at NIT and I'm an LFX mentee and the open mentor project for Zoe Python SDK mentorship program. So. A fun fact about me is that I love to play chess. So I'll be turning over to Abdul Samad. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Abdul Samad. I'm a software engineering student from Smart Institute of Technology. I'm a part of LFX Summer Mentee under the Open Mainframe project. Um, the fun fact about me is like I like to play cricket. Over to Timothy. Thank you so much. So uh, to give a bit of background on the Zoe Python SDK, uh, if you're not familiar with Zoe, um, it is um, a set of applications that aims to to bridge the gap between modern technology and the mainframe. And uh, and so we include SDKs uh, for, uh, for multiple different programming languages. Uh, the most mature Zoe SDK is the Node.js SDK, which was created with the intent of supporting Zoe CLI. The Zoe command line, uh, 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 the Zoe command line interface is written in Node.js, and so it is using uh, the SDK to implement most of its functionality. But now that Zoe has become a more mature, there are some other languages that have SDKs as well. For example, uh, Kotlin and the Python SDK, which is what we'll be talking about today. And so the the, the Python SDK has a number of different packages. They're generally split up uh, based on the, the different sets of functionalities offered by the ZOSMF REST API. ZOSMF stands for ZOS Management Facility, and it's an API that can be run on the mainframe to interact with data sets, USS files, and jobs. So uh, as you can see here in this comparison on, on, the, on, the, on the right, the the Node.js SDK uh, contains a few more packages than the than the uh, Python one, and we hope to maybe add some more to the Python SDK in the uh, future. But for now, uh, the SDKs that 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 we have for Python include a core SDK that defines a common utilities like an SDK base class that is inherited by all the other SDKs, and it contains profile loading methods that you'll hear more about later. And then the other SDKs here are largely grouped uh, based on the different functionalities offered by ZOSMF for um, issuing console commands, working with files, jobs, issuing TSO commands, as well as other more generic ZOSMF operations. And with that, I'll turn it over to Fernando to talk in more detail about what we um, accomplished during this mentorship. Thank you, Timothy. And just to get to explain what the plan was at the beginning, right? First, we wanted the mentees to be to get acquainted with the project, get get their feet wet. So we designed a couple of uh, milestones on GitHub that helped them start off for, with the, some of the more explainable, more applicable features of the SDKs. And we compare them, we sort of contrast those with the Node.js SDK, right, for, for simplicity. For example, uh, changing job classes, uh, submitting or, or listing uh, listing and copying data sets through the CS, CSMF files and jobs APIs, right? To then move on to the most uh, focused uh, specific items for the mentorship, which were around team configuration files. Uh, and here you will you will hear from more from Aditya and Samad to to the to in, to talk about more on the validation of the schema files, uh, the loading of secure properties, loading from environment variables and and much more. There was a, a third item that we wanted to get to, uh, which is a stretch, the sample SDKs or the sample Python SDK, but this sort of shows that there's a lot more that we could do with the Python SDK and others uh, in future OMP mentorships. Uh, so now I'm going to turn it over to Aditya. Thank you, Fernando. So 
i am going to talk about the accomplishment which i have uh, which i have achieved in this 3 months of mentorship program so one of the main uh, accomplishment is i am a active contributor for more than one and a half year in zoe python sdk i have been contributing to it before the starting of the mentorship program and the second one which is the main important one which i have achieved during this 3 months of mentorship program is that i have worked on whole release and change of class APIs for ZOS jobs. And uh, I have also worked on implementing the unit, unit test for them also. And uh, I have also implemented the schema validation and uh, environment variable property loading. And uh, for them, I have also worked on implementing the unit test. So the main thing which I have learned from this mentorship program is that I have learned so many technical skills, whether it is about IBM mainframe or it is about creating SDK, software development kit. And I have also learned about importance of unit testing in the process of software engineering. And I have also, in the, pro, in the three months of mentorship program, I have struggled with some of the fake file system while implementing the unit test. So that's what I have learned, the importance of it. And the last but not the least, networking and communication, which is so much important in the in the uh, area of software engineering. And the recommendation that I would like to give to the future mentees is that uh, to the future mentees who are eager to learn new technologies and have passion to com contribute in open open source project, they are really welcome to this mentorship program. And it is a really cool opportunity that as a student, you personally get to mentor by some of the lot of amazing software developers. And and few of the three highlights which, uh, which uh, you will get in the LFX mentorship program that includes first one is learning. As a new to software engineering or a newbie, I really learned a lot by working with some lot uh, by by learning with the uh, experienced people. Second one is networking. This is one of the underrated perks. Networking and interacting improves one of the soft skills and promotes growth when you hear different views and approaches for different problems. And the third one is stipend. Obviously, who doesn't love stipend while working in the, while, while learning? LFX program pays you a great stipend. And so at the end, I will show you the demo of the project that I have been working on and implementing the features for this Python SDK. So I will share my screen. Yep. So this uh, this is the profile properties uh, team configuration. So here I will show you the validation schema which I have implemented for the code Python SDK. So when you have this configuration file, the configuration file will direct you to the schema file, which is this. So if there is any error in the configuration file, something like this port, which has to be integer. If we change it, if it mistakes, uh, if we create a mistake by changing it to string or any other data. so. You can also put a parameter that is validate schema and turn it to true. It is by default, it is set to true. So when you run this, it will generate a validation error. So here it is. It will create a validation error, which uh, which will cause due to the schema validation. And another, there are many other errors, which I can show you. Uh, one of them is also uh, schema validation, which, uh, which is kind of like this if you put something uh, invalid in the schema file and uh, try to run it so it will give you the schema error so this is uh, one of the uh, implementation that i have worked on and another one was the uh, environment variable so if you try to put uh, like if you have configuration file and you have profile for properties, sorry, I will undo it. And uh, you have a profile name like something like this, ZOSMF. And if you try to put 
and your environment variable something like host name to aditya if i put it and uh, you want uh, your properties profile property to be override with the with your environment variable which you have set so you can provide it with a parameter override with environment variable and set it to true by default it is set to false because because we don't want uh, every time to override it with the environment variable so if you run it it will give you the host equals to whichever you have set to the whichever you have set in the environment variable if not if you want to uh, like uh, don't want to uh, check if it is not overriding with the environment variable you can also try again it and uh, you can test it and it will give you the host name from the profile property so this this uh, these are the main of the main uh, implementation that i have worked on three months of uh, mentorship program so now i will turn over to abdul samad hi my name is abdul samad i will be discussing about the uh, the task i have worked on during my internship so the accomplishment i have achieved was working with zoe as i got a chance of learning how the ibm stuff work and uh, how the run, how to get a familiarity with the uh, uh, implemented Zoe framework. Uh, the significant contribution I have made was data set listening and copying the enhancement, uh, which was uh, interacting with the Zoe SMF uh, APIs. And for the Zoe core, I have worked on secure credential storage with credential manager, uh, which consists of securing the credential manager on window and secure properties and profile properties on the credential manager. Um, for the learning, I have done a lot during my mentorship program in this three months. Uh, for example, working as a working as a team and helping others and like collaborating and asking for the reviews. And uh, apart from that, I have learned a lot from specifically the issues I have faced, uh, which was a window specific issue, some encoding errors, uh, which was uh, kind of different from other operating system. Uh, uh, moving to the recommendation, uh, I would like to recommend anyone who is interested in working as an open source should try once. Uh, it will help you uh, learning a lot, uh, working as a real world project uh, during your student, uh, during your education. Um, for me, I personally learned a lot from in my internships, uh, which, such, which is like personal growth. And I have earned some personal growth and professional growth and during as a, working as a Kobe contributor. Moving to my demo. So for the demo, I have worked on load secure, uh, load secure values for multi credential entries on Windows. Previously, it was not implemented, so I have to work on it. Uh, like for the window, we have this. Um, for the window, we have this uh, uh, limitation not to we cannot store some uh, amount. We cannot store the credential uh, exceeding some limit. For that, we have to chunk it out into the multi credentials and then store it to the credential manager for the window. For that, uh, I have worked on this issue. Um, considering this profile for base property is exceeding the limit for the credential managers, so I'm setting it by like setting some part of it, uh, just to show how it works. For it, for the, for that, that, that we have to first load the secure prop, it then save the secure prop with any values we are thinking of saving it, and then calling the save secure prop will uh, eventually save the uh, all the credential credentials into the credential manager by running it. You can see like this is a lot, this is a long log. Uh, it will uh, save it in the credential manager, something like this in the, by dividing it into three pieces, uh, depending upon how long the credentials are. Uh, this is one of the issues I have worked on and which was very challenging about Okay, so for the safe profile property, I have worked on this issue. So we have a different configurations file in our project, like Zoe config file and Zoe. Uh, Zoe. Okay, so like the Zoe con config file in the Zoe config JSON. Um, for example, like I have to store, like for example, I want to store the properties Z2 SMF property uh, brought uh, into the uh, brought, uh, in, in, into the profile into the config file, uh, what it does, it, it will just search for the Zoe SMF 
into all of the configuration file and if it not found any of them so it will store into the highest configuration file which is considered as one which is implemented which is which i store in our current directory we are working on so for example this is my current directory and we have this zsmf uh, if i remove this thing and then i call this like port and 144 so by, by defining the cpo false it means that it will not store the value into the credential manager only onto the config file so if i run this so we can see uh, now it's uh, exists here so we can also change the parameter of this to from false to true then it will uh, save it then it will uh, remove it from here and save it uh, into the credential manager um, apart from this if you do not want to specify want to like add uh, add if, if you want to save uh, many multiple profile properties we can also do it by calling the safe profile, set profile properties for example the uh, lpar 88 is not exist anywhere so what it does it will go to this directory and find and it will save to the this property the properties i have mentioned here like the port 433 and and the and the user and the password so as you can see like the secure having some user and the password so when it when it will be run it what it does it will uh, it it will store the proper values of secure user and the password into the credential manager so i think it will be implemented here yeah so code is here and not the values of the user and the password and it will be updated into the credential manager and we can also test it out by calling the load secure prop and the uh, credential managers Okay, so I have mentioned that it will restore the values and uh, yeah, it will restore the values. Yeah. So that's all over to Fernando. All right. Thank you so much. And with that, I believe we can uh, this presentation has come to a close. And as you can see, a lot of good enhancements to the team configuration files and, and all the all the methods, all the APIs provided by the Python SDK but a lot more to come in a future mentorship. Uh, thank you all for your attention and have a good rest of your day. Thank you.